quite frankly, it probably would have been preferable to have your books knocked out of your hand because it's direct, it's over, and you move on. But the, the impact, the indirect, is incredibly difficult. Um, now, with bullying, there, there are lots of different types of direct bullying. There's obviously direct stabbing, hitting, shooting, uh, damaging property, sexual harassment, taunting. Those are all direct types of bullying. bullying. The problem is, the problem is, is that when you bring internet into the realm of this, the internet provides a child the ability to try to um, bully from afar. And, you know, I've asked kids um, about, you know, they talk about the things that they say online, and I asked them, would you say that to the kid's face? And they said, oh my God, we'd never say that to the kid's face. You're saying it! Same thing. So the problem is, anonymity-wise, anonymity-wise, the internet provides a certain, certain amount of uh, anonymity. By the way, let me just say this. Just a little different topic, but it talks about anonymous. If you have kids at home with a computer, the, thing, the recommendation that I always make to parents, first of all, take the darn computer out of the bedroom and put it into, put it into some type of well-traveled room. Because when they have a computer in their bedroom, the problem is, and I'm not saying all kids, the problem is many kids feel as though they're anonymous. No one knows what they're doing. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you're at open house and a parent, since parents know you're all technology experts, okay, and you're at open house and the parents say, you know, what do you think I should be doing with the computer with my child at home? You first of all ask, where is the computer? Okay? Because professionally, you should recommend for them to take the computer out of their bedroom. Because it makes it too anonymous. This might be helpful for your action plan. There's a tips for students. And these are different tips, reaching out, be cool, change the school community. If you witness bullying, interrupt it. Probably one of the best things that um, you, a child can do is to walk to class or accompany someone. Typically, bullies do not pick on groups of kids. If a kid that's typically bullied is a, sort of like a loner or sort of an individual by themselves. Seriously, if you have children, special needs children, it would not be a bad recommendation to have them walk to other classes together. Okay, it may sound stupid, but trust me, that will help. That brings us into the area of cyberbullying. First documented tragic um, instances of cyberbullying was the Megan Mare story. Did I, has anyone ever heard of the Megan Mare story? Okay, the Megan Mare story was the benchmark for cyberbullying. And the circumstances that surrounded it were so outrageous that it inflamed everybody. Um, let me just 
show you this video. This video is maybe five or six minutes long, but it's well worth the time.
I have to tell you, my daughter was a, a top level soccer player. And the people that would get most crazy were the parents on the sideline, honest to God. Parents at times, when they're dealing with their kids, lose a certain <laughs> level of rationality, okay? Um, to your question about being charged with anything, at that point they hadn't been charged. And at a later time, um, they did charge them, um, you know, for manslaughter and lost the case. Then they charged him in a civil case, civil suit and they lost the case. What the deal was is that, and you're going to find it all the time, is that very often issues with technology move much more quickly than the laws that are on the books to protect people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Is that because there was really no precedent, because there was really no law saying that that was criminal activity, they couldn't be charged with anything. And um, it, it boggles the mind, but I'm afraid that's the case. Wow. Okay? I know it's disgraceful. Um, but in fact, that that was the case. I briefly talked about one of the things that I tell the kids when we talk about cyberbullying. I said that one of the things the kids immediately do if they get an email or if they get a text message uh, that is uh, insulting or derogatory, what's the first thing that they do? They just erase it and said, you know, it won't happen again, I'm sure. And of course it does. If in fact a kid is in a situation or if a kid comes to you and shows you her cell phone and says look what Jimmy sent to me and it's really obnoxious and of a bullying nature you need to make sure that you save that message if it's an email save it and print it why? Because the administration and or um, police can't do anything based upon hearsay. They have to have evidence. So if in fact something like that happens, make sure it's not erased. Okay? Make sure it's not erased. Um, that in fact is um, very, very important. CNN News has set up a whole section, and that link is at the very bottom of the page, a whole section on bullying. Okay? A whole section on bullying and issues and videos speaking to the issue. It's a great resource. They did a nice job on it. Remember, the reason that we're talking about bullying is for you to help your kids emotionally get through the classroom situation. 